Love Talk Radio. Today's topic is about manufacturers' specifications in regards to oversized engineering, even egress, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to talk about this. And first, I would like to introduce myself to the audience. My name is Sammy Nelson. I own a national distribution exterior window and door supply company. I have 290 locations in 19 different states, and I also am available on a consultation project-by-project basis, so you would want to contact me if you're building a custom home or if you're dealing with a historical property, if you need a window professional to install your windows and you're looking to purchase windows that are high quality and uh, at reasonable trading market prices. I've been in the window industry for 31 years. I am out of Chicago, Illinois. My office hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. You can call me at area code 630-487-8312. That's area code 630-487-8312. My website is www.buyfromsammy.com. That's B-U-Y-F-R-O-M-S-A-M-M-Y.com. My email address is buyfromsammy at yahoo.com. You can also find me on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook under Buy From Sammy and Sammy Nelson. Okay, so as many of you know, I have about nine different manufacturers that I work with throughout the United States. I have access to 17 manufacturing plants at all times. I am a bulk supply warehouse. So basically when you purchase from me, you are a bulk buyer of windows and doors. I also carry entry doors as well as patio doors. It is not a Uh, less is more scenario in a way. I mean, less is more, but it's like, I'm not going to be the least expensive window available on the market today. And the reason why I'm not the least expensive is because what I do offer is a quality product at a awesome price, along with customer service knowledge and all the tools that you need from start to finish to have a successful window replacement or window purchase if you are a new home builder, apartment buildings, things like that. A lot of times people will come to me, and this happens a lot up in the New England area in the East Coast. I I know I, I tend to favor the East Coast, but it's because of the global warming and climate change. I do projects on the West Coast, which is west of the Mississippi, but I only do – consultation work in project by project basis. So I work with developers and designers doing different lines for them, but it's not the same as like what goes on in the East Coast because the climates are just very different. And so because the East Coast is older um, and it's like hundreds of years older than even the Midwest or the West Coast, a lot of the buildings have, were designed um, with standards from back in the day. So in the east coast i will get these windows that are like 90 inches high that's really high for a window if you know what i'm saying so what manufacturers look for is we have a general guideline a a rule of thumb as you will um in regards to the window industry so for example um you know like a double hung window a, a reasonable size for that would be 36 by 60. Okay, Um, now if somebody comes to me and they want to order a slider window, 
36 by 60. The first question I'm going to ask him is, did you give me the width first? Because in the window industry, we have certain standards. And when you're ordering windows, it's always the width first followed by the height second. So if you're using a reputable authorized distributor company, they should be able to have catch in place with common sense placing your window orders. That right away would throw up a red flag. I would say, look, um, that size is more conducive to a slider window. Let's go ahead and switch it over to that line because you want the window to be able to function properly in the space. So a good window distributor will be able to tell you, this is what I recommend for that window. This is the type of window that I recommend. And then even down to the sizes, they should be able to work with you in regards to um, manufacturing specifications. A window has to be a certain minimum wide and a certain minimum high in order for it to function properly. People look at windows and they just think to themselves, you know, it's mostly glass. But, you know, you have to remember, unless it's a stationary unit or a direct set picture window, something that is not operable, the size of the glass does matter because this is what we're doing to have ventilation in the home. So in order to ventilate that window, we have to put it in an operable sash, and that sash goes into a mainframe. So you're losing approximately six inches on the width and six inches on the height of glass visibility, and also that translates into ear infiltration and all of these things are a variance when you're coming up with a window design. All of the window manufacturers that I work with are listed on the top 100 window manufacturers for the United States. And the reason why it's important to work with the top 100 is because they have engineering departments in place and certain standards that they follow year after year after year to manufacture a quality product to be put out into the end consumer's marketplace. This is longe longevity that is, that is reachable because of the ingenuity that goes into the product line. The manufacturers that I work with set up safeguards. So when you're entering different types of sizes into the computer system to do work with the designer, because I work with um, programs to help design projects. So I work with high-end quality software to make sure I'm checking all of my specifications, including an egress opening. I'm not guessing on anything here. So everything is put in a designer, and we go ahead and we start saying, okay, when a double-hung window or gets over 40 inches wide, we're now going to put extra in extra reinforcement into that meeting rail. When a slider window is over 46 inches high, now we're gonna start putting reinforcements in at the sash rail and things like that to ensure that the product that you're ordering will be able to stand withstand the lifetime warranty that goes along with that product. Um, and as we discuss all the time, it's very important to be able to work within your manufacturer's guidelines and leave it up to the big dogs, leave it up to the professionals, leave it up to the people who do this day in and day out and um, work in the industry basically to always find solutions. So it's important to work within your manufacturer's requirements of your minimum and maximums and also utilizing additional reinforcements. Another rule of thumb is if you're going to order a painted exterior window, the manufacturer should always suggest using a full screen. I understand that there's some people who don't appreciate that type of technology, and in some situations, half screens will be um, allowed, like in a single hung window, but it's just common sense that if the manufacturer is recommending something like this, then that is what the, you should follow is their recommendations because if they're on the top 100 manufacturers list, they've been in the business a very long time and they have certifications with the different types of organizations working with the glass manufacturers, working with the vinyl extruding companies, working with the architects, working with building associations. Um, the one thing that I think that people try to get away from is purchasing an extra window. 
So let's just say your window is, you know, 30 inches wide by 90 inches high. You know, is it possible for a manufacturer to make that window? It is. Well, is the height being over six inches going to affect the warranty? Maybe, maybe not, depending on who it is that you're using. But basically, what we want to caution against is trying to fit just one window in the opening, and then it's not going to function properly. So I did a building in Aurora, Illinois, and it was a 130 years old, and the window had to be made historically to that opening. The, I could not divide it up. What, I, what should have went in there, okay, what should have went in the opening was a picture window, a stationary unit, over an awning window. So the awning window would open up at the bottom, and the room would still have ventilation. But was the building code required, and even the building um, department can be wrong, is um, a double hung window. And that is a commercial rated window. And after, because the sashes are so heavy, time after time what's gonna happen is the balancers are gonna wear out and the sashes are not gonna meet at the meeting rail. And basically the operation of the window is gonna fail and that'll be right at the mark where the prorated warranty for those manufacturers is going to kick in, and basically the owner is going to be forced to go against the go up against the building department to recommend the stationary window with a awning window below it because the technology that they used when they built that building is not sufficient up until today's standards, especially with global warming and the greenhouse effect. So. There are times where we'll make windows, especially for historical projects and things like that, outside of what the manufacturer does, um, you know, warranty with and what our requirements are. But those windows are made, and when those windows are made, they do not include a warranty. It is a special request, a special run, and there is no warranty that is available on that product line. So I just want to thank everybody who downloads my show. You can go ahead and it is uploaded every week to iTunes, and it is on a blog talk radio.com and speaker.com. Just say, hey, Alexa, play weekly window talk with Sammy the Window Girl, and you will get a full playlist of all of my podcasts. I think we're up to... I don't know how many downloads. It's a lot. I don't know. I do make, I do, I do get a revenue stream off of it. So um, I do appreciate everybody that passes the links on and things like that. So I want to thank you everybody for listening. I will be back next week with another uh, topic. And if there's a topic that you want me to discuss, go ahead and just reach out to me and I will go ahead and do a podcast for you. Thank you so much. And I hope you're enjoying summer. Thank you.